Uh, right now, we'll be introducing our next speaker, Marty Kaplan. Marty has, uh, is now currently at uh, EA BioWare and has 18 titles. Am I getting that right, Marty? Something like that. Something like that. He's been doing this for a while. Uh, 18 titles under his belt, and, uh, and I'll just take it away. Have you take it away? Cheers, thanks. Cool. Well, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, except, uh, I'm going to talk about um, after the awesome game that you all made comes out, what you want out of your players, which is the conversation around the water cooler, the mythical water cooler conversation that is, uh, is an effective and probably the most effective word of mouth way to make your game successful. And, my, and personally, I love it when players talk about my games. So, um, the water cooler is all about the games and the stories that players tell about them. Uh, so I'm Martin Hunter Kaplan. I'm a producer at Bioware Redwood Shores. I'm working in mobile now, and um, all opinions here are mine. <laughs> uh, they made me say that. Uh, and uh, so, what is the thesis here? So I'm thinking that uh, the best stories in games are actually the ones that players tell each other about the games they're playing. And uh, so I'm just going to go through uh, some charts and uh, like tell some stories about games that I've been playing, and uh, maybe we can get some people to tell some back to me, and, and uh, I think we'll all uh, uh, verify whether or not this thesis is workable. Uh, so first, a super exciting chart: the likelihood of emergent conversation. Uh, so uh, on one axis, we have at the top linear storytelling, linear game. This is this is a, this is a big halo around this concept. It's not specific. But, um, and on the other end, self-directed. So that would be, there's no railroading, there's no story, there's no cutscenes, or there shouldn't be any cutscenes, right? But anyway, totally open. Um, and then on the other axis, I'm gonna talk about how you can have a very fixed game where what you see is what you get, you're playing it, there's really not much uh, in the game that changes over time for the player. And then on the way to the other end, it's custom, so you can customize your character, you can customize the world, you can customize everything that you're doing. Uh, to, uh, to basically as part of the game. Uh, so we're going to start with plots of games on here, and I've drawn uh, a few games from the top grossing, which is kind of a big target for mobile nowadays, uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll go through those and see if there's stories to tell about them amongst ourselves. Slotomania! I got nothing. <laughs> I got no stories for this one. It's up, it's up there. It's a successful game. It's making hell of money, right? But um, yeah, not, not a lot of stories. I won. And then I mm -hmm. tap it some more out of yeah. So, <laughs> we'll move there. No one, anyone here with an awesome Slotomania story? <laughs> so, next, the Simpsons tapped out. So, this is an EA game, you know, I'm shilling for it a little bit. But the, uh, uh, the upshot is it's number one grossing. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those games that seems to be uh, pretty, pretty successful now. And um, it has a very linear sort of uh, gameplay to it. And, um, uh, however, the stuff that you can sort of put together is pretty fixed because it is based on the license. Obviously, they have a big, you know, Matt Groening will come to your house and shoot you if you don't do what he wants. So, uh, uh, you know, that's, it's a, that's the kind of game that is. Uh, plot Island, Clash of Clans. This is another big game on mobile right now. Um, I would put this uh, down towards self-directed because you can, uh, uh, in lots of mechanical ways in the game, choose your strategies to sort of attack all of these different um, reverse uh, 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 the villages you attack and that kind of thing, and then choose the order that you build your uh, uh, stuff up in. And you're doing a lot of PvP, uh, so how you defend and how you attack your buddies is a pretty important factor. Uh, next, XCOM. So this one's not mobile, but I had to put it in because, <laughs> oh my god, XCOM. Uh, so this one's really, really great. We have uh, a lot of uh, uh, stories amongst all my friends about it, and so it's, it's a very core game, but basically it's about alien invasion, and it's selling really, really well in, on uh, Steam and is on, on console as well. Uh, and now finally Minecraft, so everyone knows a Minecraft story. Uh, in XCOM, you sort of uh, have a, a linear storyline, but you have lots more customizability compared to say, The Simpsons, because you're using a, a squad. And then in Minecraft, of course, everything is totally customizable, you have no Limits are, it's, as if it's a block, you can move it, you can use it, you can put it anywhere you want, and it's almost a platform uh, for, for gameplay. Um, and then finally, I'm going to throw, you know, a nice 
curveball at y'all and say, Call Cthulhu. This is, uh, you know, tabletop gaming. You are exactly, you know, this is the, where I come from. You know, when I was nine to seven years old, starting to play this kind of stuff, really got me into games, and I'm a lifer now. And so anyway, Call of Cthulhu is a horror role-playing game based on H.P. Lovecraft's um, world. Um, if you've ever read any of his horror novels from the 20s. Anyway, it's great because you will die and go insane. I mean, maybe in that order or reverse. Uh, and uh, so that brings out just a kind of gameplay that is, is very compelling to me as a storyteller. Uh, so we'll talk a little about each of these. So, um, like I said, it's a lot of mania, I got nothing. Uh, so Symptoms Tapped Out started, uh, you know, pretty good. They kind of fell over and then got back up. And then what really launched them was uh, the Treehouse of Horror. So this caused the storytelling amongst players to go like, oh my god, I remember how awesome all those Treehouse episodes were before the Simpsons became totally like, you know, uh, your, your granddad who's senile and, you know, still walking around, but it's not so funny anymore. But anyway, this stuff was really, really great and they could talk about it and they could reminisce stories amongst players driving a game to success. <clears throat> Finally, Clash of Clans. So this, the stories here are all about like, oh my god, my buddy attacked me, he wiped out my village, I'm going to kick his ass by popping 10 bucks on this game right now and destroying him utterly. And that's happened over and over and over to the point where it is like number two or number three top grossing, right? So uh, <clears throat> that's the kind of story you really like to hear, right? Like as a, as a, as a developer, you like, I balanced it well enough so that I'm motivating people in a free game to put down money to beat their friend's asses. So, there you go. <clears throat> XCOM, so this one has so many stories that are so great. So, you can customize your little like squaddies or fighting the alien menace. And everyone I know takes a theme or friends or family members and puts them in there and then plays an Iron Man mode, which means you cannot resurrect them. You can't take your save game and come back. When they die, they die. And they die a lot. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, my favorite one here is, you know, I can tell you, is, you know, of course, I put my wife in there, and um, I quietly resurrect her and recustomize her every time her, uh, she falls to, you know, the plasma weapons of the alien horrors. Uh, and uh, so lots more stories about that, really, really, um, you know, just, just told, and, you know, it's the kind of stories that when you hear it, and this is important, you want to go get that game and experience that story for yourself. Um, you want to you play with your friends, you want to come back at your friend with the story of the same kind of thing that he just did and really make uh, a conversation happen that goes over and over and over about that game. Uh, so let's see, a few more. So Minecraft is, to me, really interesting because people can collaborate to tell stories. It's a platform. You're making the Starship Enterprise or you're going to make a world with your friends together. Or pe I mean, people are using it in all different kinds of ways to tell stories visually to each other, and um, also just like, hey, look at this cool thing I discovered. Here's the pseudo-random number seed, so now you can see it and experience that this world that I've discovered. Uh, you know, so it's all about the sharing discovery, sharing discovery. There's not a lot of narrative to it. People put their own narrative on it because that's what they're experiencing and they want to share it with their friends. Um, and then finally, the Delta Green story I got to tell uh, is, uh, so you know, this is not on computers, it's around a table, uh, it's a convention playing with an uh, amazing uh, keeper, as they call him, the sort of dungeon master. Of, and this is Delta Green, so it's modern. So what we, the, the characters we were playing were a CIA group that was running a black site in Poland in 2012. Uh, I was Yachtsman, who was sort of a, a corporate asshole who had uh, sort of gotten refuge in the, uh, uh, in the CIA and just a, just a you know, amoral dick, basically. So uh, then, he counted out these things like this. So uh, you maybe can't see it, but basically it's the, the draft OMS guidelines on medical and psychological support for detainee interrogations, September 4, 2003. This is a real document from the CIA. <laughs> Interrogation support, what you can do, what you can't do. And then he gave us a menu. And we had like a bunch of detainees in the storytelling thing where we <laughs> decided how we were going to torture them. It was awful. It was terrible. I felt horrible, but I was compelled to play this character through the end, because that's just what you do when you play, you know, at a convention. And of course, as the night wore on, we uh, got, it got later and later, we had a 2 a.m., we're like, oh god, we have to torture another guy. And, uh, <laughs> and in the end, in the end, the, the horror, like the, the supernatural horror that showed up was a relief. 
It really was. It was like, oh, finally the fiction is here, and it saved us from like this horrible like realization of like what's happening in the real world. So this is conflation of um, real world uh, research and, and interesting stuff, the, the interplay between all the people who are playing different characters, their attitudes, and how they dealt with the situation, and then of course the, the fiction that sort of came in on it. Just an amazing game that it convinced me, again, and I've kind of always known this, that the best, my, my favorite game experience is still with other people, still telling stories around the table, maybe with a system framework, maybe not. I don't know if anyone played Fiasco, but that's a new, new game with a very limited system that's super fun, it's, it's improvisation for gamers, really. Um, so that kind of thing uh, is sort of at the way out of the, you can go anywhere, you can do anything because you're dealing with creating a world of human, with human brains collaborating. Um, and I can tell stories like that and make you guys laugh. So, okay. so let's go back to our chart and uh, just, go, just the, go back to the thesis. So emergent conversation, like I think you guys probably enjoyed the story about the, the black site torture group <laughs> most out of this. Although we had some fun along the way. So you know, I would say <laughs> that the water cooler is most likely as you continue uh, all the way across here from the blue to the red. Uh, where you can have linear stories and people will talk about them, you have self-directed stories and people can talk about them, but the more customization that you put into your game, the more uh, engagement that players can have with um, making decisions, that's, that's going to help you with your article of conversation. So how do you make games to maximize the chances of player to player stories? You create a world poss possibility, you support a diversity of experience. You provide meaningful choices. Now, meaningful is the most important thing there. So what games have up on pretty much any other media right now, and really it's, it's, it's about that meaning uh, in a world that gives you something to share about. So I did this, you did that, we were in the same game, but we had this different experience. It's, uh, or it could be mechanical, it could be like my strategy, here's your strategy, I beat, you know, beat you with it, or I beat this other guy with it, or even just the story. Like, you remember when this happened? Oh, cool. And, but then I, check, I took on this boss this way, and I took the boss on this way. You have all different kinds of ways that players uh, engage with the game and have a meaningful choice that they can share. And so extra credit, of course, especially in our sort of you know, social games, that kind of stuff, you can uh, provide ways inside the game to show off or verify stories to friends where, um, and I think this is, a, this is a future direction that we're gonna see a lot. Um, it happens a lot in PvP, but you can see it in a lot of different um, games, even, even as far back as, uh, you know, third-person shooters where you have the videos that they share online, and, and of course, hey, uh, Halo and all those games have like amazing back-end systems to take videos of what you do and share them, do all your statistical analysis. Um, you know, that stuff is very mature right now, and uh, on mobile, it's sort of moving out of the hardcore <coughs> into people telling stories with the games that they play. Uh, cool. So, <coughs> cow, oops, what do I do? I <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so in, in the end, uh, you know, this is really just a teeny, teeny, teeny little, uh, I'm not going to make this. Sorry, guys. Well, maybe we can just look at it. Um, so, of course, there's, uh, there's lots more to game type games than this little slice. Uh, but, you know, by giving people a an experience that compel to retell, um, you know, you've basically expanded the mind share of your game in the best possible way, which is player to player to player to player, telling stories to each other. Thanks. Um, I, I would like to do one little plug. If you, uh, uh, my team is looking for uh, engineers for servers and for client who are familiar with Unity. So talk to me if you are one of those kind of people. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Marty. Thank you again. So, in case everybody didn't get that, EA, Bioware is looking for engineers and, Marty, what did you say? Engineers and? Uh, uh, engine, uh, soft, uh, server engineers. Server engineers. And client engineers who are experienced with Unity. And client engineers experienced with Unity. All right, thank you very much. Uh, really interesting perspective on this and really kind of talks to what I was talking about earlier about the power of story in the human brain that it comes back to experience, that we actually experience stories uh, in the same way that we experience reality, and we retell those stories in the water cooler. And it's in the retelling that we're actually 
reconfirming the validity of the story, enhancing meaning, increasing meaning and empathy, and all of those things that we look at and actually can now measure uh, neurologically.